New this morning, St. Paul's McNally Smith College of Music will close its doors next week after more than 30 years in operation. The school sent a mass email to staff yesterday saying they are in dire financial straits and will be closing down at the end of the semester, which is today. In the email, the school said staff members who were expecting a paycheck Friday will not receive it and that their health insurance through Medica is paid through the end of the month. Administrators also said 38 students plan to graduate Saturday and 300 others would not receive credit for classes completed this semester if the school were to shut down immediately. The school blamed funding trouble on the decline of higher education in general and on recent regulations from the Department of Education. McNally Smith first opened in 1985. It has about 600 students and about 100 faculty members on staff. Our Mary McGuire has continuing coverage of this story and she'll join us at 5 o'clock live from the school. The U of M Board of Regents is expected to take a final vote today on a tuition hike for most non-resident students. A committee endorsed the 15% tuition hike yesterday. The proposal would boost tuition for out-of-state students to $28,734 next fall. That's an increase of about $3,700. The Star Tribune reports it would be the second double-digit increase in a row for out-of-state undergrads who saw tuition rise by 12.5% this fall. Students from Wisconsin, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Manitoba would not be affected because of reciprocity agreements. Republican lawmakers are planning to unveil their combined House and Senate tax reform bill today. They had hoped to vote on it early next week, but those plans now appear to be in doubt. Florida Senator Marco Rubio is threatening to vote no unless the final deal includes an expanded child tax credit. If they can figure out a way to add to the 1100 figure, um, I, I won't support the bill. Yeah, he's really been a great guy and very supportive. I think that. Senator Rubio will be there. The final plan preserves deductions for student loans and medical expenses that were eliminated in previous bills. It also doubles the standard deduction but caps the deduction for state and local income and property taxes at about $10,000 a year. With all Democrats expected to vote against the plan, Senate Republicans can only afford to lose two of their own. And Senator John McCain is still in the hospital as he gets treatment for brain cancer. The Hennepin County attorney says he does not have enough evidence right now to press charges in the shooting death of Justine Damon. I have to prove beyond reasonable doubt the moment he shot the gun, he feared for his life. And he used force because he thought he was going to be killed. But I can't, he won't answer my questions if he doesn't have to, okay? We all have Fifth Amendment rights, and I respect that. So I can't talk to her because she's gone. And the other cop who just gave us. A group confronted Hennepin County Attorney Mike Friedman on Wednesday night. Someone recorded it and posted the video to Facebook. They asked whether he would charge Officer Muhammad Noor with the murder with murder for Damon's death. He blamed investigators for not doing their job. Damon called 911 on the night of July 15th and reported hearing sounds of distress. An hour and a half later, the 40-year-old was dead in the alley near her southwest Minneapolis home. Officer Noor shot past his partner while both were inside their squad. Mike Freeman got the case on September 12th. It's been more than three months and still no decision has been made. Freeman said he would make a decision by the end of the year, but as Kate Raddatz reports, these new remarks may change his decision. Why is it so difficult when it's a, poli a police officer, Mike? In this video, a group confronts Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman, asking whether he would charge Officer Noor for killing Justine Damon. Freeman responds, saying he didn't have enough evidence yet. I gotta have the evidence, and I don't have it yet. Let me just say it's not my fault. The video, taken at the Minneapolis Regional Labor Federation holiday party, was posted to the Twin Cities Coalition for Justice for Jamar Clark's Facebook page. Freeman told the group the holdup was because of investigators. If it isn't my fault, who didn't do their job? It's all investigators. They don't work for me. They haven't done their job. Freeman didn't specify what organization the investigators were with. When asked about the video, the Minneapolis Police Department responded with a statement saying in part, the Minneapolis Police Department understands and respects the calls for a swift resolution to this case. The MPD has cooperated fully with the state's investigation. 
In the video, Freeman says his hope is still to have a decision soon, but he doesn't give a definitive timeline. Trust me, nobody wants it done for Christmas than me. And that's, that's the big present I'd like to see under the Christmas tree. Kate Raditz, WCCO 4 News. Minneapolis Mayor Betsy Hodges was unavailable for comment. We also reached out to the attorney representing Officer Noor, but did not hear back. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office said yesterday it was working diligently on the case to complete the investigation as soon as possible. Stay with WCCO 4 News for continuing coverage of the Justine Damon case. You don't need a lightsaber to stop bad guys who fall into the dark side. Now watch this. This video shows some crooks pull up in a red car next to a construction van in the Czech Republic last week. After the suspects tried to steal tools from the van, a scuffle ensued. But when the thieves tried to escape, the warehouse workers jumped on nearby forklifts and boxed in their car. The company released the video to highlight the workers' quick thinking and heroic efforts. <laughs> pretty interesting. Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty quick. Good, Good to get after all that. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>